Our next topic covers transportation. Desiree will have the question about RTD and Kelly will start. So Des. The Regional Transportation District provides nearly all of Denver's transit services, yet it faces long-term budget issues, isn't affordable for all Denverites, and doesn't reach all neighborhoods. Is it city government's responsibility to step up and pay for more transit service in the city? And if so, how would you approach that? Yeah, we're seeing it already, Desiree, where uh, the city of Denver is looking at bus rapid transit on Colfax. Uh, I'll be looking at it on Colorado Boulevard, Federal Boulevard, huge opportunities. Uh, but I've also met with the general manager at RTD. I've met with some of the board members there to talk about the challenge. We have to make that system work. It's a massive investment, but it's critical for air quality, for transportation, all those issues, and frankly, affordability. And so some of the things I'm encouraged that they're looking at is bringing that price down. I think we have to bring the price down for our employers to afford an EcoPass to extremely low levels, where every employer says, I'm buying that EcoPass, particularly for our transit dependent employees, because it is so expensive to buy it on your own. I also think, and this is what I talked to RTD about, I think our students should ride for free, both our high school kids and our college students. These are trains and buses that are running already, putting our kids on them. Uh, is not an increase in expense, but it is an inc increase in utilization. And so I would partner with them to do those kinds of things. Thank you, Mike. I do think this is a real crisis where our current transit system is not being used well for a couple of reasons. One is people find it not always safe. They find it not always convenient. They find it not always reliable and often not always affordable. And so there are things we have to do to change a number of those. There are some easy first steps. Our residents who work at the airport have to pay to use public transit to get there, which means they're in cars, adding more traffic to Pena Boulevard and then having to pay for parking. We should make it easier for those employees to get to and from work uh, on transit. We should also make it easier, as I laid out earlier, to get people to and from work downtown on public transit and be able to get access to those eco passes for free. What that would mean is more encouragement of people using transit and more ability for them to get to downtown, which is a neighborhood we want to revive anyway. Right now, actually, part of the reasons why it feels unsafe is because there aren't enough riders. By putting more riders onto the RTD, we both actually get more safety and we can get more reliability of routes because the more riders we have, the more routes we can generate, the more frequent the bus or light rail becomes and the more likely folks are to use it. Thank you. Now, Denver's approach to streets has changed. We're learning how to divide that space between drivers and cyclists, scooters and pedestrians. Is Denver on the right path when it comes to adding more protected lanes for non-vehicle uses? And if so, how would you navigate the recurring tension in neighborhoods such as when street parking is taken away by the city? Mike, you begin. We know we have to do a both and. We know that there are a lot of folks like me with three kids who've got to run a lot of errands who aren't going to be able to always use public transit to get to and from their next spot. So we do have to continue to make sure that we have uh, accessible and easy to navigate roads for cars. But we do want to every chance we can find a way to make it easier for folks to get out of cars. Uh, that means yes, if you are a biker or a bike commuter or want to take your family out for a ride, that means dedicated bike lanes that are safe. That means they either have uh, a median between the bike lane and the drivers or they have uh, the sticks or they have the ability to have an elevated road, something that provides real safety for you to take your daughter or your mother out on a ride. That's important. Uh, but we also can be able to build a network, a map, so you know if you're trying to get from southeast Denver to downtown or from northwest to southeast, you know what those routes are and how to get on them and access them. And so we can do both. We can both make it easy for vehicles, but we can also encourage people to get out of vehicles, to get onto bikes and get into public transit. That's also why we want to build more of our housing around public transit to make it easier for folks to not have to have cars at all. Thank you. Kelly. Yeah, I've commuted for 30 years on my bike. Um, and so I have a lot of experience of understanding uh, how great it can be. And in the beginning, when I started commuting, it was to save money on gas and parking. And so I think it's critically important that we make sure people have this option and it feels safe. Uh, but I also worry about, we have a vision zero. Vision zero is that we kill zero pedestrians and zero cyclists on their bike. And we're heading in the wrong direction. I am pro not killing people on their bike. So I, I really think we have to do a quick check to make sure we're making the right investments in the right place. I don't mean to slow it down. I mean to actually speed it up so that we get this right and we are keeping people safe and our kids feel safe riding to school and we feel safe running errands or riding to work. And without doing that, we are never going to address the challenges we face in transportation or air quality or our environment. So I'm very committed to addressing this for all residents. Okay, so on that uh, vision zero question, Joe. 
Kelly, you've talked about Vision Zero as needing to be reset. It's the plan to end all traffic deaths and serious injuries by 2020 or 2030. And you know, what exactly would you reset? How do you do that? How do you fix it? Yeah, I think this is where we see other cities around the nation actually making great progress on their Vision Zero. They're seeing their numbers decline uh, in people dying in traffic uh, or in interaction with traffic. And so what I would do is look at those cities that are making great progress and ask the question, what are they doing and what do we need to change anything we're doing? Uh, but I've also seen more recently some studies that show if we could focus on the highest traf uh, accident areas where we're seeing those collisions and make improvements there, I'm also gonna guess we could see drastic improvement very quickly. So I would focus on the data that tells us where our problems and those collisions literally are occurring so we can make the improvements as a priority in those areas. Mike, same question, how would you fix Vision Zero? I think there are a couple of key steps. One is we do wanna provide, as we discussed, as many incentives as possible for folks to get out of vehicles. Uh, and part of that means access to public transit. Another is being deliberate about how we try to build and develop neighborhoods, which was what we, many of us want, is the ability to have walkable neighborhoods where you can build housing that is connected to commercial and retail, where you can come out of your house, you can walk to the grocery store, you can walk to a restaurant, you can walk to your kid's school, and we know the places where we have those kind of neighborhoods that are walkable, we see less traffic deaths. Where we have places where you have massive uh, major throughways coming in the middle of residential neighborhoods and it's hard to pass, there aren't easy pedestrian walkways, there aren't easy biking walkways or biking ways, that really affects the safety. So it's a matter of both being deliberate about building a bike infrastructure around the city, giving people access to public transit, but also being thoughtful about how we're developing neighborhoods so they're built for pedestrians and for bikers, so you're not trying to put a pedestrian in the middle of a six-lane road.